Hi everyone, I'm Eli Schilling, Director of Product Management for Oracle Cloud, and I wanted to spend some time today discussing infrastructure as code with you. So we're going to start off with just a quick run through of the whole notion or the, the premise behind infrastructure as code. Now with infrastructure as code, it's pretty much just like it sounds. We're going to generate a document, this is configuration, a script of some sort, that al allows us to define what it is we want to create inside of our application infrastructure or ecosystem and deliver that to some sort of application or interpreter that will then generate the necessary programmatic calls or API calls to our preferred cloud vendor to generate that infrastructure. So this document is traditionally developed in the form of uh, JSON, uh, HCL, or in some cases even YAML. Now the language is going to depend on the interpreter that you choose. We'll get to that a little bit later. But essentially we define all those resources, we define the configuration parameters, we hand this over, and within a matter of minutes I have my networking infrastructure, I have some servers, maybe a load balancer, a database, and all of those things are automatically generated from the code, the infrastructure code, that we've created in our configuration here. Now we're going to talk about two different types of infrastructure as code. The first one here is called declarative. Now with declarative infrastructure as code, this is going to give us a couple of key benefits. The notion here is that we define, we declare what it is we want, and the interpreter is going to use that information to construct the result in the most effective way possible. That's going to give us things like state management. So when we create something using infrastructure as code, our tool is aware of the existing state. If we change the configuration, it's not going to adjust or affect any existing resource that we haven't altered. It simply adds or deletes the resources based on what we've added or deleted in our code. Declarative is also going to help us handle the item potency of the resources. Once again, if I've already defined and created a resource, we don't want to try to create it once more. We identify through the state that it already exists, the change has already been applied, so we simply move on to the next configuration item or the next configuration change. Now, again, because of that state management, declarative infrastructure as code is generally easier to update or delete resources. So I don't have to go out and, and locate or identify those resources. We're already tracking that with my code, so I can simply go in and delete some lines of code, apply that through my infrastructure as code tool, and the resource will be altered or deleted based on that simple change. So the summary here of declarative simply my code defines what the end state should look like. My tool will use that code to produce the end state. Anytime my code changes, the end state will change. Now, the other side here is going to be procedural. And procedural has its own set of benefits. This is going to give us a little bit more control in terms of defining the order in which the infrastructure as code is, is applied. So we're basically going to specify we'll specify a list of tasks and the tool is going to essentially take and execute those tasks one by one. So the task might be create a network, deploy a server, deploy some code, and it will def execute in the specific order that we define inside of our code. Now, procedural infrastructure as code gives us 
potentially better flexibility. That means I can order my code in a specific fashion. Uh, I can adjust or update depending upon changes I want to make to um, the configuration or the environment. And because I define the sequence in, of execution, uh, it, it enables me to have better control over that infrastructure. Now, one of the other key benefits of procedural tools that help us deliver infrastructure as code is that they often also include configuration management capabilities. So that's going to give me not only the ability to deploy and manage infrastructure, but also the ability to take care of that application stack while it's already or after it's been deployed. So I can use this tool to stand at the infrastructure, deploy application updates, hot fixes, kernel patches, and manage that in an ongoing basis. Now, the one caveat to procedural infrastructure as code is that it doesn't account for state management. Thus, I have to take into account if I've created a resource using a procedural infrastructure as code tool, if I need to alter the resource, I first have to identify that resource and then affect change upon that resource. So while it does give us a little bit more flexibility and control of the environment, it does potentially require a little extra effort on my part to manage existing infrastructure. Now, there are, of course, tools that are available to help with application and resource discovery to help simplify that management task. But again, we have to take that into account when deciding which infrastructure as code tool is best suited for our needs. Now, when it comes to declarative infrastructure as code tools, you probably already had one in mind if you've used these before. Uh, Terraform Terraform is one of the industry best uh, infrastructure as code tools, and they support a wide variety of, of cloud providers. So it makes it flexible, easy to use when delivering infrastructure as code. On the other side, procedural. Um, Ansible is a very common tool for this. And Ansible allows us to deliver not only the configuration management piece, but it also utilizes cloud modules to enable us to define resources to construct or deconstruct based on the infrastructure we're looking to build. So this is infrastructure as code. Uh, again, make sure that you identify the requirements of your uh, application, whether you choose to use declarative or procedural, uh, that will have an impact on the, the manageability of your environment. Thanks for joining us today. Hope to see you next time.